Matching hundreds. It's a coach. This is Madden 19 on EA Sports. Coming up, we'll see teams with a couple of running backs who each went over 100 yards a weekend to go, as it'll be the Denver Broncos as they get set to match up against the Cincinnati Bengals. I'll be back with you again with scores around the league at halftime. But kickoff right around the corner. And standing by to call the action here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. From the banks of the Ohio River, there's a look at Paul Brown Stadium here in Cincinnati, Ohio. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it. This crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the Denver Broncos and the Cincinnati Bengals. Hi again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gordon to my left, Charles Davis. And Charles, you focus on this Bengal team entering play. They come in losers of two straight, so they're trying to right the ship here a little bit. They're teetering a little bit, aren't they? And now things could really go south if they lose this game, so they understand the importance of playing well and stopping this streak. Meanwhile, for the visiting Broncos, they come in feeling good after back-to-back -back victories. And if you look back to last week, it was all about their defense. Anytime you hold an NFL team... The calendar has turned to December, and we're in the home stretch now as we're underway in Week 13. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Here come the Bengals now to take over. Leading them out is the Austin, Texas native at quarterback. It's Baker Mayfield. And while he won't admit it because his team lost the game, he had some fun in the last one. <laughs> he I threw mean, for over 400 yards. I mean, there's no getting around it. As a QB, yeah, okay. Hurry up, here we go. Blue 90. And it's a welcome back to hell for last year's number one pick. This is Dalvin Cook. The numbers a week ago for Cook. He was creeping up toward 200 yards, thought he was going to get there, didn't quite make it, but also two rushing touchdowns. And even if he only got about half those numbers this week, this team would take it in a heartbeat, wouldn't they? Because last week, he was spectacular. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. He was well over 100 yards last week. He told us this week, a little ambitious, that he wants to hit that 200 mark. We'll see. Makes sense, though, doesn't it? Have we ever run into a running back that had a great game the week before that didn't think that's just going to naturally continue? Just make sure you feed me the football. And that's what they're all about. Continuity, rhythm, number of carries. Just keep giving it to him. They run to the rookie from Virginia State, Trenton Cannon. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. The linebacker, Preston Brown, brings him down. And the offense on the field for the first time today, and they were high-powered a week ago. And they're beginning to believe that they've established a groove. They expect those type of performances each and every week. Running it, throwing it, they're precise. They'll try to throw here. Mayfield, and it's incomplete. Noah Brown, the Ohio State man, the intended receiver. And it's third down. A look now at how Denver is going to line up defensively. This crew against the pass issues at times. Ranked number 24, Charles, in the NFL. And I think you're going to see some changes in the offseason, whether it's through the draft, free agency, maybe even both. They definitely need some help in the secondary. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Hurry up, here we go. Blue 90. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. And complete right side to Cook. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. And they're getting him involved early. You feel like they saw something on tape or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area that they want him involved, just as you said. They want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game, but they must like the matchups they're getting.
field now from the 50. On the move to his left. And the ball is knocked out. The Broncos say they have it. They do. I know that taking care of the football is something that's drawn into every guy who plays this position, no matter what, whether it's running it, in the pocket, out of the pocket. But it's almost surprising to me that there aren't more fumbles by that position because of the way that they get attacked on each and every play. Yeah, well, he had the fumble last week. Now, here's two weeks in a row with a fumble loss. Concentration has got to be there, and he's got to understand how much time he has to take care of a play. And maybe his clock is off just a little Full bit. Start offense. That's going to set him back five yards. A false start backs him up five, first and 15. And they'll run it here. And this defense feeling the encouragement. They stop him at the line of scrimmage on the first play of the afternoon. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. I think what we just saw there, partner, was linebacking speed that can trump O-line power. We see that at times because he filled the gap before the offensive lineman could get to the next level and take him on. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. I do believe we'll see a little bit more of this as this game progresses because when you can have that type of a game in the middle of the defense, it hurts them in so many ways because most teams like to be strong down the middle. And if you can sting them there, that open things up for you on the outside as well. But that's where he, their big tight end, is so good. That middle third, the seam routes, the in routes. Yeah, you're right. Probably see more of that. Yeah, it takes a lot of courage and fortitude to go in the middle as well. <laughs> and he's got it. It was Sean Matthews here on the catch. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Now, that's going to be a tough one to explain when they get together and watch the game film, isn't it? I mean, they had the right call, had the out route. He's got to know where the first down sticks are, yet he steps out of bounds that close. Not their best play. So on fourth down, kicking it away here, Michael Pilardi. And out now, here come the Bengals. And they got across the 50 last time, but fumbled and turned it over, so they'll be looking to have a short-term memory here, Mr. Davis. Not only a short-term memory, here we go now. but a whole lot game. better ball security. <laughs> because if they take care of the ball, continue to move it, their chances of scoring some points they got feel pretty good about. They thought they had things moving in the right direction last time. Fumbles, they don't just affect you on offense. They affect your overall team, because now your defense has to make that stand up. Nice rhythm right, throw go. there on first Three. down. He located his tight end, made it a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. We were just talking about him pregame. Three tackles for a loss last week. You thought he looked so explosive on film. Starting off good there, another one in the first quarter. He's every bit of what you described. And I don't want to make it too simplistic, but right now for him, it's see ball, get ball. And that's what he's doing really, really well. And he's doing it in the offensive backfield. He gets it to Brown. Good play. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. 18 yards on his first catch of the game. It's a first down. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. All right, here we go. First down, here's the run with Cook. Cook able to escape. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down. It will. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and putting the defense back on its heels. Here on first down. 
That's caught by the former Sooner, Mark Andrews. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. Well, from an offense's perspective, that sure was pretty because the corner route, it's extremely difficult to defend from my perspective. What we just saw there, is that sort of the evolution of the tight end position? Yeah, I think it is because more and more tight ends are being treated like wide receivers. These are some agile players who can make a play in any spot on the field. Here we go now. 319. Now a play fake here on first down. And an alley to run. <laughs> and he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. And another example of why Baker Mayfield went number one in the draft. His ability to confound defensive coordinators. They played him for the pass. They covered it well. He takes off with his legs and scrambles for a big gain. get him inside the red zone here down to about the 19. A gain of three, second down. Second down, Mayfield. That'll be caught right side by Hamilton. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. His first catch, good for nine in the first down. time as they draw a bit closer here for a second and goal. So that run gets him about halfway home. Yeah, it's now second and goal. The end zone beckons. It looms. They can do whatever they want. Full playbook. Run it again, or they can go play action and try and put it in that way. Hurry up. Here we go. 319. 319. Mayfield now on second down. Flush to his right. And he is going to go down. Back at the 11-yard line. Oh, and after the sack, he's still down on the field. We'll check on his status when we get back. This has been a long drive. You got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? Now Hundley. And this is caught. For the moment, it's a touchdown, but multiple flags down, so let's sort this out. Illegal touching. Offense. So erase the red zone score. They'll have to dial that one up again. And you know how difficult it is to strike in the red zone because things are a little bit more condensed. You gotta go back to their play chart and see if they can dial up another one. And Elliott puts this one through. And the Bengals are on the board first here. It's 3-0. They had it first and goal. Three attempts, couldn't get it in, so they settle for three. Yeah, the field tends to shrink a little bit the closer you get to the goal line, doesn't it? It doesn't sound right. It sounds a little counterintuitive. But you run out of space to run the deep routes, so they can just sit on the shorter stuff if you're going to throw it. If you want to run it, there's just not as much space. They end up having to take three there. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. 
And Denver getting set to take the field and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. Malik Jefferson in there on the stop. The completion on first didn't get much, and now the run on second doesn't get a whole lot either. Well, if you're a good play caller, you've already looked ahead and anticipated this type of situation. Already down in his play sheet, trying to dial up a big third down play. Got a man. It's his tight end, Lance Kendricks. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves his sticks. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. Second down, Dalton. And he's taken down inside the 30. First connection there of the afternoon for those two, and it's good for a first down. That was a terrific catch. I mean, to go up there and get it one-handed like that, but I almost want to go into that riff about back in my day, the gloves weren't quite like this. When did gloves really become prevalent, just in general? I think in the 80s. I think as we started to move through the 80s, especially as we got towards the latter part of that, but a lot of those were really like baseball batting gloves to begin with, with not much of a tacky area on the glove. In fact, there was none. I actually remember in cold weather games wearing the old scuba gloves, which you'd wear in the diving, but they would split too easily in the course of the game. Then the glove manufacturers got smart and started adding to it, and here we are today. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. third down. It's Austin. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. They're able to convert on third down and that sets up a first and goal. The first drive this unit had, they punted this drive much more polished. Just looking crisper, aren't they? Moving the ball. Maybe the first drive was a little bit of a wake-up call. Probably a little bit angry that they had to punt the ball away the first time they had it. Got motivated. Got to the side. Back alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Bronco football to begin quarter number two, and they've got it here with a first down. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. Encroachment, defense. A free five yards as the defense jumps. I know it's an anticipation game down. for them, but it's also a reaction game, and they reacted poorly on that one. So it's still first and goal, but now they get to try it from a bit closer. Marshall, the lone receiver on the left side. Dalton here from the gun. And this is caught for a Bronco touchdown. Willie Sneed, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Broncos are in for six. And he's a little bit on the shorter side as a receiver. Maybe sometimes for the defense, tough to find the little guys, right? Yeah, sometimes they get lost in the traffic, but usually what it means is that rather than just winning with height or even speed, they use their quickness to find a way to get open. Well, tall, short, wide, skinny, whatever, there it results in a touchdown. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But also have to remember, they did put points on the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling him in the huddle right now. Let's go! 
On second down, Cook. Pretty move. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Offense. set to take the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline, because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. And on the ground they go with a running back. They'll be tackled shy of the 35. Shifty footwork gets him a little extra on the play. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave them with a second and two. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. Here's a second and two now from the 33. Throwing on second down. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are, you know? Make him make someone miss in the open field. And they'll go on the ground. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. That'll be a loss of four yards on the play. And that'll make it third and 13. Out of the gun, it's Dalton. That's complete to his tight end. This is Lance Kendricks. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. Well, the coverage was tight that time. They allowed the pass underneath to him, but they rallied to him pretty fast, too. Converged on him and got him down. That'll bring up fourth down. It'll go as just a 15-yard punt. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. They start the drive with Cook. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Well, that one was over before it could get rolling. How about the D just knifing into the backfield and shutting that one down? Let's go! A give. This is Cook. So he got three of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. Jalen Smith, the Notre Dame man, in on the tackle. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. Come on, let's go! Grand 38! They're going to look to throw. And that is incomplete. So on fourth down, here's Johnny Townsend to punt it. Back deep is Tavon Austin. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. And Denver getting set to take the field. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach 
can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? After the incompletion, they'll try once more from the 20-yard line on second and 10. Eight, eight, and they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Calling no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. So nothing there, but maybe you blame that on the blocking. Yeah, at some point, you've got to win at the point of attack. And on that play, that was all the defense. They made it happen. And this is hauled in by Matthews. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. Holding offense. So they decline it as that will bring up four. And I know that yardage and field position are keys to any game played, but you've got to consider downs when you're talking about penalties. And they wisely did not take that one and made it fourth down. A very good starting field position from the Bengals here as they come up first and ten. Come on, let's go! What? Nine. On play action, they'll throw. Looking left side, Andrews with it complete. That one goes for 24 yards. He's a rookie, and you don't want to get hung up on the word potential. But when you see him make catches like that, you keep thinking to yourself, on, he's good right, now. Man. He's got a chance to be great with plenty of work. They run. Cook. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Tackle made there by Mason Foster. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it was the defense getting it done again and holding them to no game. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. The Bengals passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. Well, they obviously read man coverage there, partner. And he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what do you think. Mean by that? Yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route. Probably thought he's going to take it upfield. Then it curls back inside for the completion. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Now Cook. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. A five-yard gain, and now they're set up first and goal. Well, that was a unit that understood exactly where the first down marker was, handed it to their Here guy who could run it, One, created some space, One, and he got nine. there. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And he'll take this into the end zone for Bengal TD. In for the score. And the Bengals are able to grow their lead. Now he's having a nice little first half here, partner. And it's a first half that leaves us anticipating what can still come. I mean, two touchdowns already here through the second quarter. There could be plenty more before this game is over. Elliott now to kick this one away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. And Denver getting set to take the field. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. In most pass defenses, the guy playing safety has the ability to roam free and try and go to the football. But when you're a man, you've got to cover just like the guy playing out on the corner. Lock up on the receiver and go to the football. That's exactly what he did, batting that one away. Third down, a shot here for Dalton. Losing nine yards there. And it also brings up four. Here's Michael Pilardi now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And that will come the offense as they take over. Curtis Samuel and the rest of the offense heading back out there now. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Come on, let's go! Here's Cook as they begin on the ground. And he'll get this up to about the 38-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. 
Yeah, that wasn't a big run, just a short one there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there, and you throw it again, you throw it again, then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set him up. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Offense. So some holding over on the left side of that O-line. And I know for the guys trying to move those big defensive people, they'd love for them to stay in one spot. Oh, and they move around so quick and so fast that sometimes you just have to grab them. Here's Cannon. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. He was able to pick up six yards there, so that leaves him with a third and 13. Two minutes to play here in the first half. And we'll remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll join Jonathan Coachman and the gang in Orlando. Coach will have stats and scores from the early games going on here around the NFL. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Wide open receiver complete. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. A Bengal first down on the 16-yard pickup there. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone go. coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. Here we go! What? From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Andrews. Eight yards in the completion, but now they face third down. Now the Bengals on third down. They've been good, three for four thus far. This time they face a third and two. They'll run it. Here's Cook. And an alley to run. And he's taken down inside the 30. They'll get 14 on that one. Good for a Bengal first down. Well, partner, what do you think? Might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up, but... Yeah, it's a moot point now. I was curious, so if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. cushion this half has been theirs and this will not be returnable it's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback and Denver getting set to take the field and right now these guys they're shuffling a little bit maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with him putting the football away yes yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit asking a lot of questions what are you seeing what are you getting maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. It's second down. Don't look it. Caught right side. It's Snead. It'll be a pickup of 16 and a Bronco first down. All that practice time came to fruition on that play. All those timing routes that they work on through training camp, OTAs, mini camp, and just regular season, they got it done on that one. An out cut, ball was delivered, and picked up the completion. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout as the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go before halftime. To throw on second down, Dalton. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he'll get it down here to the 43. Five yards on the pickup. And that's going to lead to a third down. From the gun, Dalton looks to throw. And he's got his man on the out route. Now the Broncos will use their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 13 seconds to play in half number one. 
A first down throw coming for Dalton. Finding his safety valve here. That's complete. And he gets it down to the 32. Call it a gain of five. And it'll be second down. So we've reached halftime here in the Queen City, and it's, there you have it. Halftime quickly over. Third quarter, here we go. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is taken just shy of the 10 here. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Here comes the Broncos offensive unit here as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never wanted to make something more important than it actually is. Right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But this is a real, that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. It's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. He finds his man. It's Austin. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. They give him a gain of 37. Now that play will end up on the highlights, and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see, the offensive line that bought the extra time that allowed for the big completion downfield, those guys made that play possible. They'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. And once again, leverage wins. The offensive line lower than the defensive front. They moved them and found some good space for the guy carrying the ball. Oh, and this ball's tipped and intercepted. Picked off by Malik Hooker. And he'll get this back to the 32-yard line. He was looking for Matthews that time. First possession of the third quarter, an interception, so maybe a second-half tone setter. Indeed, and not the tone they wanted to set. That's the equivalent of running out the wrong door and running into your pool instead of running out onto the field. A real dud for that one. Has that happened to you before? No, but I've heard stories about teams actually doing that back in the good old days. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. They run again on first down, Cook, and give him about five as he gets this up to the 48-yard line. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. And incomplete on the deep ball. The positioning here is key. As a defensive back, you're taught 99% of the time make a play on the football. But go. in this case, Brand making a play on the man was Brand all the Brand difference. Brand. That's what forced the incompletion. All start offense. Well, this whole line's been great. They got the big lead, so give them the pass there, I guess. Yeah, I would think so, because we are grading them on their performance in this game. A lot go. of pluses in their boxes so far. He'll look to throw, and this is going to be incomplete. The touch and time are critical for those types of throws. He put a lot of zip on that one. Needed just a little bit more finesse trying to get it to his back. And the punt team on now as this one sent away. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, and that could have been trouble. And coming out now, the Broncos. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And, of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. When you're a player of his stature, you don't just circle the games on your team's calendar. You circle the Pro Bowl <laughs> without a doubt. That's a game that you just figure you're going to be in each and every year. That's because of catches like that. That's why he goes. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. 
And we just saw another example. These cornerbacks have played tight coverage all game long. Might start wanting to think about a few double, triple move routes to try and shake their guys free. Yes, they have, you're right, they have had no room to breathe. Rifling one complete into the hands of Marshall. That catch good for five. It's third down. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Another chance for Dalton. And he's got Sneed. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. Holding offense. So that one a hold right guard. And you understand why offensive and defensive linemen probably go to martial arts schools and work on their hands so often because that can be the make or break difference on a play. This time he had to grab a jersey in order to make the play happen. Got caught for the penalty. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. But nobody was open downfield there. Looked like a pretty clear throw away. Yeah, definitely was that. I'm wondering why there wasn't intentional grounding. I know they're saying there's a receiver there in the area. Those darn quarterbacks, they get away with everything. <laughs> Spoken like a true defensive back, Mr. Oh, Davis. Did, did that come out? It did. Okay. They go play action here on first down. He's going to loft one deep left. Oh, well, this is taken in. It's complete. The 20. Cincinnati score. Deshaun Hamilton, an 80 yard touchdown. And the Bengals are able to grow their lead. Well, this is really simple. Let's just say it. This quarterback is on fire. Touchdown after touchdown, throwing the football. What a day for him. for the extra point. Elliott good with a PAT. And the lead is now 24. Elliott now to kick this one away. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Now this Broncos offensive unit ready to head back out onto the field. They've got to dig down deep. I mean, they need something right now, really anything to cling on to. This offense has struggled. Partner, join me in a walk to their locker room at the half, okay? Because I think what we would have seen is an offensive coordinator and his, and his assistant coaches getting together all their positions, then coming together as a group, going over adjustments, and then the head coach coming in and just screaming, wake up. Yeah. Let's get moving, guys. Yeah, I'm kind of glad we weren't Thanks in there at halftime, actually. Defense. You think he might have turned it on us, too? Yeah, but right now, whatever was said hasn't been working. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that one looked pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a five-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. Now they'll run it on the toss. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And that'll make this a second and 13. Oftentimes when you're not winning at the point of attack for an offensive line, maybe they're getting out physical, spread things out a little bit, make it more of a one-on-one -on -one blocking scheme. Then you don't have to win it physically. You just have to win it by position. That may open things up for your running backs. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. And Dalton to throw. He's got a man open. That's Marshall. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. A good pick up there of 20 yards. I'm sorry, but it's almost unfair. I mean, Brandon Marshall can make so many plays, but even when you think he's covered, He's not. No, he's really not. <laughs> he uncovers and makes a play on you and picks up good yardage in doing so.
From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now a play fake here on first down. Man open left side, it's Williams. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. And it'll be Dalton again. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. Dalton, first and ten. And he gets it inside the ten to the nine. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. This will be Dalton again, and it's caught, and he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. A gain of seven that time, second goal. Seeing that play and understand just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. They lost two there, and it's third down. I have to stretch for this one. This is four down territory. They've got to get it in with the deficit that they're facing. Absolutely. It's not the fourth. And he will take it in for a Bronco touchdown. Peyton Barber, his first touchdown on the year. And the Broncos get a bit closer. Able to punch it in on third down makes it easier for those guys on the sideline. They didn't have a fourth down decision to make. Yeah, could you feel the exhale? Because they were already thinking ahead as all the good coaching staffs do. Anticipating what we have to make the call. Holding they already had it offense. lined up. Never even got to it. So now after the touchdown, Dalton will lead him up to go for two. To Dalton now. And too much on that one. It's out of the back of the end zone incomplete. Protection was great. He had time to set up a campsite. But in the secondary, though, they were ready. And I think that in most places on the field, if you have that much time to throw the ball, someone's going to shake free and you'll find an open receiver. But condensed near the goal line on a two-point conversion, all that exit, you know, there's not any extra field. So it kind of closes in on them, and that allows you to cover a little bit better. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. But we all know the guy carrying the ball is going to get the credit, both in the stat line and probably in the newspaper. But guess what? Those guys creating holes, they couldn't feel better about themselves right now. Offensive line, tight end, probably even the wide receivers are involved. They're moving the ball well. He's been big. Two touchdowns earlier. Now he's got a first down here. And not all spectacular catches are the result of a pass that maybe was not thrown quite right. Sometimes it's thrown in the perfect spot, and you have to just go get it. He did that right there. No fear there in the middle of the field. But now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Well, the secondary has really struggled today, but that's a little bit of a measure of revenge, isn't it? And they just followed the basic rules. See ball, knock ball away, turns into a nice play. Another tote for the workhorse this afternoon. It's Cook. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. Well, partner, they've been running it well the entire game, and the big guys up front, they're a huge reason why. And now they're reaping the benefits as they continue to open up big holes and gain nice yardage. And able to find Deshaun Hamilton complete. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Hundley now, six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. On the carry, it's Cook. And tough sledding. He'll get maybe a yard. Stop short of the 35. 
They're in a pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves, start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, go. they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. They run it again with Cook. And a short game down to about the 33. Give him three yards, and now they're left needing a conversion here on third and six. Well, praise has to go to the guys on the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game. And, and he's going to go down. They get to him back at the 40. Jalen Reeves Maven coming in to drop him for a loss of eight, and it'll be fourth down. And they weren't in zone coverage. They were in man, and each man did his job. And that looked like vintage, old-school coverage, didn't it? Man coverage reminded me of an old Raiders team. They had a Hall of Famer at one corner and a defensive player of the year at the other, and they just locked people down. Here's Dalton. His throw incomplete. Matthews, the intended target. That'll bring up second down. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long. And they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. And attempted a deep ball there. They didn't get it. And boy, they're going to need a few of those to actually hit in order to get back into this game. Good thing they do have a little bit of time here still left in the contest. Decent sized deficit, but not one that they can't manage. And that will be incomplete as well. I don't know, he had to be pretty quick with his fingers to start and stop after the ball hit the ground. I'm giving him some credit. Well, I'm thinking about the mental focus, you know? Yeah. The mental focus on yeah, the whole that's thing. True. You gotta stay with it. That's true. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down close to the goal line at the one-yard line. daylight after that as he's brought down and the tackle there will go to Ryan Anderson and give him a lot of credit there but even more credit to the guys up Let's front in that situation you what? know it's going to be a stacked defensive front and to be able to gain that much yardage that's a big win for the guys on offense yeah they were just about standing on their own goal line so to get a few yards there a great start now we'll see what second down breaks now Hundley, and he is incomplete. We always talk about receivers. If the ball hits your hand, you're supposed to haul it in, but it is hard to adjust to a pass thrown a little bit behind you. That one was all the momentum going forward. Go. Couldn't contort his body back to grab it. They give it off here to the tight end. And not much there as he gets it up to about the five-yard line. Just a yard on the run there, and that's going to bring us to a fourth down. Here now, Johnny Townsend, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And a nice job here on special teams. This will be down inside the 10 at the 8-yard line. The Broncos offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? The Bronco first down there, 12 yards on the play. On first and 10, here's Andy Dalton. And Matthews has it right side. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. First and 10 for Dalton. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. 10 more there and another first down. Larry, Larry. 
Now Dalton with a first and ten. Flushed out right. And he will avoid the contact as he slides to a stop. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. It'll be a pickup of only a yard. And that'll make it second down. Out of the gun, it's Dalton. And his throw's going to be incomplete. He was trying to hit his big receiver, Brandon Marshall, and now it's third down. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. Third down, a shot here for Dalton. Left side caught by Matthews. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. Did they maybe play that too safely on third down? I know you don't want to just throw a ball blindly downfield, but that didn't help them a whole lot. I think they probably said if it's open, take the shot. If not, get something safe because we do have fourth down to try and pick it up. Well, with that field goal, you can argue they needed to get back within two scores, and they did indeed do that, but still a pretty uphill battle. Still going to take two fourth-quarter touchdowns to get back into it. As you and I know, that's a tall order against any NFL defense. They're going to need their own defense to make some plays as well to give them an opportunity. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Looking left side, Andrews with it complete. No gain there on the completion, second and 10. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and 10. Throwing, Hundley. Over the middle, complete. It's Andrews. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. That one good for 15, and the Bengals get a first down. Here we go! On play action, they'll throw. He's going deep for Brown. And that is going to be pulling one-handed. Wow. And all the way in for a Cincinnati score. A big play there. His fourth touchdown on the year. And the Bengals add on to their lead. Trying to bust out of that losing funk and these fans have to like this and all right fellas this is more like it and i know that if this holds up after the game they're gonna give the fans a lot of credit being at home getting the support but you and i both know it goes deeper than that they had to get it together in their own facility look each other in the eye and say okay what's it gonna take to break this losing streak and they really came together with a good week of practice andy dalton caught right side at sneed and they'll take him down at the 31 yard line a gain of six there on first. You got the big lead defensively. Willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle him after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. They take a shot downfield there, but it winds up falling incomplete. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone, eventually that becomes man on man. And you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of truth and make a play on the football. Toward the sideline, he will have the first down. Good catch. He was able to keep the feet inbounds. His big game continues. Ten catches now and another first down. He's been a busy man here in this one, and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds. And with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game, wouldn't you keep him busy as well? I would. Of course. you got to <laughs> keep throwing it to him. He keeps making plays. And again, Andy Dalton to throw. And he drops it incomplete, and their struggles continue here. So he can't hang on, and as I watch it unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. Well, 
you know a coach said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. No chance at all. Way easier said than done. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. They brought in a heavy set on third down, and that usually means running play, but we have seen them throw out of that formation. And sure enough, they snuck the tight end out on that one, wound up hitting him for a first down. Looking for more there on first down, but this throw downfield, incomplete. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing, and on that one, they had to fly, just sending the guy downfield with the in route accompanying it. What people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said forget the underneath route. They went for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. That time they hit him out of the slot on the drag. And that route takes some fortitude from the guy running it because he knows he's offense. going through the briar patch, as I like to call it, right? He's trying to work his way through all that traffic and people wanting to put a little contact on it. Really well done. To throw on third down, Dalton. That's complete to his tight end. This is Lance Kendricks. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. A gain of four on the play. And that'll bring up fourth down. Excellent job there defensively. Gave up the underneath to the tight end on third down. And they made sure that they did their job. Got him on the ground and prevented him picking up a first down. And he's got Rodgers. And he's going to get this inside the 30. First down throw coming for Dalton. And he will find his man on the outside. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 12 yards on back-to-back -back plays there, and that's another first down. And they'll go with the ground attack here. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. Holding offense. That hold coming from the middle of the line, the center. And it's difficult for him because sometimes you've got people right over you, and as soon as you snap it, trying to get your hands up and block them, you can be a little bit late Lee, getting it done. <laughs> Another chance for Dalton. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. Second down, Dalton. And Matthews over the middle with the ground. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. Nothing flashy there, the slant to the slot. Oh, and the frustration for the defensive guys, because it's a quick play. And you know it's going to be a bang-bang play in terms of the throw and the catch. And then he's able to absorb the contact and complete Full it. start, offense. Yeah, maybe they were coming with a blitz that time and it caused a jump. I think if we saw it, you know that they saw it. Might have been a little discussion down there. Bad guys coming, pick them up, pick them up. And someone jumped. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And they will at least get them inside the red zone here, down to about the 19. Ball at a gain of three and it'll bring up fourth down. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. So it's Bronco football as we get your reset here. They come up on a fourth down situation with things not looking particularly rosy. And Myers able to knock it through. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So still lots of work left to do, but here comes the onside kick. Well, in the grand scheme of things, those three points likely not going to matter much, but I guess they get a little closer, a little more respectability. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've been outplayed all game long, but like my mom used to tell me all the time before I went out, dress up a little bit, son. Make yourself respectable. <laughs> and that's what they're doing here. They're just dressing up the final score. Let's go! What? Nine! On the ground, it's Cook. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. 
And that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. And that's the kind of run that gets everyone excited on offense. And you know, oftentimes, the guys who carry the ball are the ones in the huddle doing the chirping. Right now, I think it's the offensive line telling them, run it again. We are right there about to break a big one. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Trying to barrel up in there, but I don't think he got it. Call it no gain that time, and they're going to be left looking up at a fourth and one. Well, I know it points to this when you wanted to close your eyes because of all the points that were being put on the scoreboard, you're a defensive guy, but it was a fun little track meet, wasn't it? It was, and you know the people who really enjoyed this game? They're the ones that like going to batting practice at the Major League Baseball <laughs> parks, right? Seeing the 14-11 to 11 game, that sort of deal, that's right up their alley with what we saw in this one. So for Cincinnati, the win gets them back to 500 at 6-6 six and six on the year. And they will hit the road next week to take on the L.A. Chargers. Meanwhile, for the Broncos, this season is beyond salvage now as they fall to 2-10. And, and they'll try to get back to their winning ways next week as they head to Santa Clara to take on the 49ers. That'll do it for us. I'm Brandon Gordon, alongside Charles Davis. Thanks to our entire crew as well. We'll talk to you next time. So long, everybody.